from Hollywood, the Judy Canova Show, brought to you each week by the Colgate Palm Olive Peach Company, makers of Palm Olive Soap and Colgate Tooth Powder. <laughs> Palmolive Soap, your beauty hope, and Colgate Tooth Powder for a breathless sweet presents the Judy Canova Show with Mel Blank, Ruby Dendridge, Joe Kearns, Verna Felton, George Neese, Jerry Hausner, the sportsman, Opie Cates and his orchestra, and starring Judy Canova. <laughs> Tiny little moon kiss garden There we stand beneath the old oak tree And my heart stands still With a magic thrill As he sings this song of love to me Romantically Tickly chick, cha la cha la, tickle around me in a banana cabala cabala ca. Can't you see? Chickory chick is me. Chickory chick, cha la cha la, tickle around me in a banana cabala cabala ca. Can't you see? Chickory chick is me. Every time you're sick and tired of just the same old thing, saying just the same old words all day. Be just like the chicken who found something new to sing. Open up your mouth and start to say. Oh, chickory chick, chala, chala, chickle around me in a banana cabala 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 excited today. For weeks, she's been trying to get a job as a model. And today, she's received a call from the Hollywood Model Agency to pose for a picture. Say, hey, Miss Judy, I'll help you get ready. All right, Geranium. Say, hey, honey, did you ever pose for an advertising picture before? Oh, yeah. Once back home, a model agency wanted a girl to pose as Miss Kentucky Hills of 1942. Miss Kentucky Hills, did you get the job? No, I had too many valleys where the hills are to be. <laughs> talk about myself, but I was a model once. <laughs> a few of model geranium? Who for it? John Powers? No, for Henry Kaiser. <laughs> Say, you know my boyfriend Pomeroy used to call me his LSMFT. LSMFT? 
Yeah. You mean because you're so round, so firm, so fully packed? <laughs> no, honey. I was this large, fine mountain of feminine temptation. <laughs> Prettiest today, so that when the photographer at the agency looks at me, he'll say, Pardon me for talking in your face, Senorita. <laughs> oh, hello, Pedro. I want you to drive me to the model agency. Where have you been? Well, Senorita, I was at the bicycle shop having my seat lowered. <laughs> Senorita, you look pretty today. And I should know, I used to be a beauty operator. You, a beauty operator? Gee, when I meet a beauty, I sure know how to operate. <laughs> Pedro, who was that blonde you were out with on Friday and Saturday? She was the brunette I was out with on Monday and Tuesday. <laughs> but she got mad because I gave her a flower. It was a chrysanthemum. Pedro, you mean chrysanthemum. There's no bee in it. There was in this one. <laughs> well, get the car ready, Pedro. I got to get over to the model agency for those pinup pictures. Well, Miss Canova, I'll have the camera set up here in just a minute. How do you want me to pose, Mr. Photographer? Well, I want you to be beautiful, be glamorous, be lovely. And after I take the picture, you can just be yourself. <laughs> Say, are you really an expert photographer? Well, my pictures made pinup girls famous in Florida, but I've only been in California a year. Golly, then maybe my picture will be in all the newspapers. The Los Angeles Times, the Los Angeles Herald, the Los Angeles Sun. But, Miss Canova, there is no sun in Los Angeles. Be patient, be patient. You've only been out here a year. <laughs> Gee, maybe my picture will appeal to men. Men? What men? Oh, shucks, you know, men. Men of the opposite sex. Oh. <laughs> Say, what kind of advertisement are they going to use this picture for? A baby food. Yeah, what's it called? McGurk's Baby Food. I can just see this picture on the billboard. Buy McGurk's, a slurpless burp for your little twerp. <laughs> you see, in this picture, you'll be the mother. Me, a mother? Oh, well, where's the baby? Oh, right here in this bassinet. <laughs> Kinda big, ain't he? <laughs> Now, uh, take the baby in your lap and we'll shoot the picture. <laughs> why, I wonder why the baby's crying. He's crying for me. You? Yeah, he wants a pinup girl. <laughs> Thank you.
as Opie Cates, his clarinet, and his orchestra playing just a little fond affection. Remember, Duster's Proof, Palm Olive Beauty Results. It's true, Duster's Proof, Palm Olive Soap can bring two out of three women a more beautiful complexion in just 14 days. And this plan was tested on women with all types of skin. Even women with dry skin, oily skin, rough skin, women as old as 50, even women whose skin wasn't clear. Yes, 36 doctors, leading skin specialists, have proved the 14-day palm olive plan improved all types of skin. Yes, brings fresher, brighter, younger-looking complexions. Start your 14-day palm olive plan now. It's as simple as one, two, three. Here's all you do. One. Wash your face with palm olive soap. Two. Then massage your face for 60 seconds with palm olive soft, lovely lather. You see, one full minute of this cleansing massage brings your skin palm olive's full, beautifying effect. Three. Then rinse. Do this just three times a day for 14 days. And that's all. Remember, doctors proved this beauty plan with palm olive soap brought two out of three of all women tested a more beautiful complexion in just 14 days, no matter what beauty care they used before. So get palm olive soap. See what palm olive can do for your own complexion in only 14 days. And for tub or shower, for loveliness all over, get the new big thrifty bath size palm olive. <laughs> You buzz me, Mr. McGurk. Oh, 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 Miss Harris. That's not the way to come into my office. You forgot the commercial. Sorry, I'll try again. <laughs> McGurk, a slurpless blurp for your little twerp. Did you burp me, Mr. McGurk? <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, just seen a picture of Judy Canova and her baby. I, I want you to write her a letter. Here we go now. Dear Judy Canova, I think you and your baby have great advertising possibilities. I would like to talk the matter over with you, so if it is convenient, I will come to see you tomorrow afternoon. At which time? Sorry, Mr. McGurk's letter says, I have an idea to step up production. I am a young father of 38. Gosh, if you ask me, he's already stepped up production. <laughs> Judy, Judy, did I hear you say you got a letter from Mr. McGurk? Yeah, and again, he's very interested in me, too. Oh, Judy, let me see the letter. I will be at your home at 4 o'clock to interview you and the baby for future advertising. Judy, do you know what this means? What, Aunt Aggie? Mr. McGurk is expecting a baby at 4 o'clock. Has Ripley heard about this? <laughs> Gee, I can't get that baby I posed with. What'll I do? Then, Miss Judy, maybe you could borrow that baby from your neighbor, Mrs. Hank Weber. Oh, that's a good idea. I'm sure they could spare it. You know, Mr. and Mrs. Weber have 12 children. I'll see if I can borrow the baby, Judy. You get ready to receive Mr. McGurk. I better tack up this picture of me and the baby before Aunt Aggie gets back. Pedro! Oh, Pedro! Senorita. Where were you? Well, Senorita, I would have come quicker, but I can't be where I was, and if you want me to be where I am, unless I send my brother and he doesn't look like me. <laughs> Pedro, I want you to help me nail up this picture. Here, I'll hold this nail, and every time I nod my head, you hit it. Well, Senorita, if you keep moving your head, how can I hit it? <laughs> Go ahead now. Hit the nail with the hammer. Oh, Senorita, I am sorry. I hit you on the finger. No, Pedro, you hit your own finger. I did. Oh! <laughs> hey, Senorita, there's something wrong with these nails. They don't want to go into the wall. Look, the heads are on the wrong end. <laughs> No, they ain't, Pedro. These nails are for the other side of the wall. <laughs> Say, Miss Judy, you ain't got the baby all right, and Miss Weber's nursemaid is here with her now. Thank you, Geranium. Oh, hello, nurse. Your mom and you can just call me Bridget. 
It's a great family I'm from. I'm an O'Hulahan on my father's side. Yeah, what are you on your mother's side? My mother didn't need anyone on her side. <laughs> He's kind of noisy, ain't he? No, nah, he's not as noisy as the twins were. Oh, were the twins noisy? Did it bother you? Not a bit. Each one cried so loud you couldn't hear the other. Oh. <laughs> I'll leave the baby, miss, but I've got to have him back for his five o'clock feeding. Okay, Bridget. I'll go now. I've got to leave a note for the ice man. He's been giving me the cold shoulder lately. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, listen to the baby geranium. He's trying to talk to us. He don't talk very plain, does he? <laughs> <laughs> well, he almost said something that time. Chuck, when I was a baby, I didn't open my mouth till I was four months old. No, why not? I was ashamed to let my parents know it didn't have no teeth. <laughs> Say, baby, what are you trying to tell me? something from the hit parade. Baby, how about at your front speaker and a sign it up, eh? No! <laughs> Uranium, maybe he wants this. What? There'll be some changes made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll be walking with my honey down honeymoon lane. It's November or the middle of June. I'll be sweeter to my sweetie than ever before. Morning, night, and noon. For I'll be walking with my honey down honeymoon lane. Soon, soon, soon. Honey, I'm in love with you. Brown and in your eyes so blue. November or the middle of June I'll be sweeter to my sweetie than ever before Morning, night, and noon For I'll be walking with my honey down on Eden That was Judy Canova singing Walking with My Honey. You call me to powder, keep smiling just right. Use it each morning and use it each night. 
Remember this message from Colgate Tooth Powder. A breath of trouble caused the rift. No diamond ring was her Christmas gift. It certainly is too bad when a breath of trouble, I mean unpleasing breath, ruins a romance. So ask yourself, could you be a victim? Has it marked you down socially? It's happened to thousands without their knowing. So just do this. Brush your teeth night and morning and before every date with Colgate Tooth Powder. For Colgate Tooth Powder cleans your breath as it cleans your teeth. Yes, scientific tests have definitely proved that in seven cases out of ten, Colgate Tooth Powder instantly stops unpleasing breath that originates in the mouth. What's more, no dentifrice at any price cleans your teeth more quickly and thoroughly than Colgate Tooth Powder. Remember to buy it first thing, and remember the name, Colgate Tooth Powder, with the accent on powder. Don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate Tooth Powder. old-fashioned way. It is. Yeah, according to the modern scientific way, you fold it here, you fold it here, and then you fold it here. <laughs> okay, Miss Judy. And that's the scientific way to iron a tablecloth. Gee, <laughs> Geranium, I wish I was married and had some children of my own. Well, honey, the way I look at it, marriage is a gamble, just like a game of cards. What do you mean? Well, the man is the king, and if the king has a jack, why, he gets the queen. And in no time at all, he has a full house. (laughs) 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 Gee, I used to cry like that when I was a baby. Yeah, it nearly drove Pa crazy, so I ran away from home. You ran away from home, honey? Yeah, and Ma left a lighted candle in the window. But Pa kept blowing it out all the time. <laughs> oh, look at the poor little thing. Gee, I wish Mr. McGurk could hurry and get here. We got to return this baby in 15 minutes. Say, hey, look, Miss Judy, your boyfriend, Mr. Botsford's on the front porch. Oh, gosh, Benchley Botsford. How will I explain to him about Mr. McGurk and the baby? Hide the baby behind the screen geranium, and I'll try to get rid of Benchley. Okay. Howdy, Benchley. Hello, Judy. Uh, I, I wasn't expecting you. Well, sorry you can't stay long. <laughs> Judy, you look upset about something. Is it because you think I've been running after other girls? No, Benchley. Running after girls never hurt no man. It's catching them that does the damage. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm sure glad to see you. Goodbye now. But, Judy, you can't treat me like this. I love you, so help me. Chuck, when you love me, you don't need no help. (laughs) Well, I'll be seeing you around. So long. Judy, I can't understand why you're acting like... (laughs) Judy, there's a baby behind this screen. Judy, is it... Is it... Benchley, this morning I didn't even know I was going to have it. (laughs) Judy, how could this possibly happen? Don't ask me. Ask McGurk and Company. It's their idea. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, look at this cute little (laughs) thing. Oh, Judy, this poor little baby, all by himself. Benchley, he ain't by himself. There's 12 others I didn't tell you about. <laughs> well, Judy, gosh, I'd, I'd, I'd like to help you, but I don't know what to do. Well, I don't either. We've been doing our darndest to keep it quiet. <laughs> the father, Judy, where's he? In New York. In New York? Yeah, he works for the Stark Club. <laughs> Judy, I've heard enough. Goodbye. Golly, now he's mad at me. <laughs> Senorita, if you sing the baby a lullaby, it will put him to sleep. Just hum a Russian lullaby song. Okay, Pedro. Mm-hmm. 
Yoink. Yoink. Pedro, is that all you can do is yell yoink? Gee, I am the biggest yoink in the house. <laughs> Well, 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 is this the little mother? Yep, little Mother McGurk, I was known as. Are you Mr. McGurk? Yes, I am. I'm the man who believes that mothers are the most important people in the world. And you're right. No baby should be born without one. (laughs) When skies are gray, who is always there to comfort me? I don't know. My mother. When all friends forsake me, who stands by me? No, no. My mother. She taught me never to be frightened. And what is it that has long legs and a skinny neck and sticks its head in the sand when it's frightened? Your mother. (laughs) Mr. McGark, why are you interested in me? Why, you're the perfect mother type. I want to put you in all my advertising campaigns. Just think you'll be on Broadway in life. Yeah, freezing to death. In lights? Oh, I thought you said in tights. <laughs> now, uh, may I see the baby? Let me see I wasn't sure if you needed a boy baby or a girl baby, so I got one of each. One of each? Gosh, Geranium, these are twins. <laughs> my, 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 they are cute babies. I'd like to get pictures of them today. Or will they be engaged? Engaged? Well, shucks, I reckon so if they meet the right people. <laughs> but I tell you, Mr. McGurk, I got a confession to make. These twins ain't mine. They belong to the lady across the street. Well, that doesn't matter. What are their names? Well, she called this one Chester and this other one she named Collision. It's a real pretty name. Collision? But collision is a word that means when two things come together unexpectedly. Well, these twins did, mister. These twins did. <laughs> I guess we've all known times when everything goes dead wrong, and we get to feeling pretty discouraged. I know I do, and when that happens to me, I find it helps to remember what I read in a little poem once. If winter comes, can spring be far behind? I'm as restless as a willow in a windstorm. I'm as jumpy as a puppet on a string. I'd say that I had spring fever, but I know it isn't spring. I'm starry-eyed and vaguely discontented, like a nightingale without a song to sing. Oh, why should I have spring fever? And don't take a chance with your romance. Use Colgate tooth powder night and morning and before every date. Ladies, there's still a colossal shortage of industrial fat, and one result is the shortage of soap in your stores. 
Remember, too, fat is needed in the manufacture of nylons, textiles, electrical appliances, baby carriages, and scores of other peacetime products. That's why Secretary of Agriculture Anderson says to keep on salvaging all used cooking fat you can, for it's needed in the manufacture of soap and other industrial uses. Remember, ladies, where there's fat, there's soap. Keep on saving it. Your butcher still pays four cents a pound for used cooking fat. Now, here's Judy. We're a little late, folks. Good night, everybody. The Judy Can Over Show is written by Fred Fox and Henry Hoople. This is NBC, the national broadcasting company.